Welcome to the first Open Tap Live here at the Hook Norton Brewery. I'm Angela Lamont and I'm going to be your beer tasting buddy for the evening. Uh, during this web beer nah. I'm sorry, I had to make that bad joke. You can ask questions tonight, join in with the tasting, and also meet some of the lovely people behind the Hook Norton beers. One of whom I've got here with me is James Clark, the managing director of the Hook Norton Brewery. James, thanks very much for joining us. No, thank you, thank you. Of course, we're not the only ones tasting. The Open Tap night is here. It's on in full swing here. Everyone's come down to the brewery to taste some beer. Um, and some of you, I believe, have been tasting since five o'clock this afternoon. Is that right? <laughs> have you tasted enough yet? <laughs> They haven't. So they're going to be tasting along with us as well. Not only that, but we have Flavia with us. And she is looking after all of you watching on Facebook Live at home. And we'll be dealing with the Facebook Live chat. So if you have any questions about the beer or want to say anything to Flavia, just say hi in the chat box and she will answer your questions and uh, put the questions across to us as well, Jane. So, Flavia, how are the folks at home doing at the moment? At the moment, they're pretty quiet. Like, they're getting ready for the beer tasting. <laughs> are they rummaging through the fridge to see if they've got they any iron sure are. Lager? I can see all the lights turn on from all the fridges in, all over the UK. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have a slight apology to make in that I did promise earlier we were going to try and figure out some scientific way of sending the beer actually down the internet to you at home. I'm afraid we didn't work that out this time. We will work on that for next time. <laughs> but if you do need to stock up on your beer, then stay tuned, because I believe, and I'm looking at James now, there may be some very special offers to be had in the online beer store at Hook Norton tonight. So, James, why would you run an open tap night and invite all these good people here to drink your beer for free? Well, it's really important to us. We, uh, we sample beers at the brewery and we do extensive sampling tests on all of the beers at different stages of their life as well. Um, but it's really important to engage with consumers and make sure we get their feedback and opinions on the beers as well. Um, because we love making beer and we're probably biased in terms of loving all of the beers that we brew. Um, what we need is to get consumers to come here, try the beers and give us some good, honest feedback. And we're really lucky that Every open tap, we get 40, 50 people here, real beer connoisseurs, and they do exactly that. They try the beers. We always have some of our new beers on. They'll try them and give us feedback. And from that, we can take that forward and you know, develop more beers in the future as well. Now, we all love drinking beer, don't we? <laughs> but tasting beer, that's a slightly different thing, isn't it? It's very easy to sit there with a pint of your favorite beer in your hand, drinking the beer and enjoying it. But tonight, you're going to be guiding us through tasting the beer. How is that so different? Well, I always say, when people say, what's your favourite beer? You should always be able to answer the one in my hand right now. Um, and hopefully, we're going to cement that a bit further forward. Um, but it is important to taste the beer, to look at the colour, take in some of the aromas, and, and obviously drink it. And um, with beer, because beer is made with malt and with hops, beer has bitterness. Um, you do need to swallow in order to really appreciate that bitterness, so none of this namby-pamby spitting out. Um, you do need to actually enjoy the whole, uh, whole experience, and then you can tell us what you think, what you like, and even if there's something there you don't like. So everyone here seems to be very much enjoying the beers tonight. The sad news is that we are behind the bar, so we had to close the bars temporarily, but we've put the beer out on the table so everyone here can taste along with James and I, and I hope you've managed to get the Hook Norton beers in as well so you can taste along with us too. So, James, these are the three beers we're going to be tasting tonight. Can you run me through those three beers very briefly, and then we'll go through each one and open each one and taste them? Absolutely, yeah. So the first beer we'll taste is Old Hooky. Hopefully you're uh, familiar with that beer. First brewed for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977 and a real classic example of a premium English style of bitter beer. Uh, we'll then try Red Rye. When you get to the Red Rye, very similar colour to the Old Hooky, um, but hopefully a very different flavour experience. I think as soon as you take the Red Rye and even just taking the aroma, you'll notice it's very different. Um, and then the third beer we're going to try is uh, one of our latest, or probably our latest beer, uh, which is Ironstone Lager. You say lager as if it's 
a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. People say to me, why did you start brewing a lager? And I look around at my colleagues and say, why did we start brewing a lager? Um, but as we've seen that the beer movement, the range of styles and flavours of beer in the UK uh, massively increase, it was a natural progression that we would try to brew something different. And lager pushes the boundaries. I was lucky enough to be at a, a very well-known brewer in the Czech Republic a few years ago, particularly like their beer. So we tried to produce a lager style, not dissimilar to that, but something to add to our range and add to the diversity. Now, I don't know about you at home, but I can only say that I've tasted one out of the three beers we're going to taste tonight, which just kind of firms up the reason that it's good to come to an open tap and try those different things, try the stuff you're, you haven't tried before and uh, take a little bit of a gamble and just see how it is. Flavia, is there anyone at home got the beers in or what are they looking forward to hearing about? Well, at the moment, Paul Worth says the red rye is awesome. I wonder what he has to say about the lager and about the old hooky. And we also have Louise here saying that she visited the brewery a couple of weeks ago and she had a lot of fun. She'd love to come back. It is a beautiful brewery. I'm looking forward to seeing it as well someday. <laughs> we'll have to do a, a Facebook Live tour of yes. the brewery yes. one day. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you've got the beers in at home. If you've got the old hooky in at home, then now is the time to unleash the old hooky and taste along with us. So James, can we have some old hooky? Yeah. And everyone who's here tonight, if you want to undo the old hooky, pour yourself a taster and get ready to taste along with James and I. Looking forward to this one. <laughs> James is an expert pourer. <laughs> Thank you very much. So. So I guess the first challenge of the evening is to find the beer that's labelled Old Hooky. It's quite clearly written on the front of a red label. Uh, crack the top on that bottle um, and share the bottle between you. Has everybody managed to get that far? Raise your glasses awesome. if you've all got an Old Hooky. Splendid. <laughs> So guide me through the tasting. Am I allowed to just drink it? You can just drink it, or uh, what you can do is, um, first thing we like to do is take in the colour. Now, you're actually using some quite narrow um, sampling glasses, so you don't quite get the full uh, rich redness come through, but you'll see nice clear beer, um, the bowl of the glass there, hopefully a, a bit of a red, um, dark That's amber tinge there. That's a lovely reddish colour um, coming through there. Has everybody found that? that that's, that's a very good start. Um, and then when we're beer tasting, we, we need to be taking the aroma. You know your sense of aroma is a lot stronger than your sense of taste, and your sense of aroma complements your sense of taste as well. So have a sniff, and then put your hand on your glass, swirl it with your other hand around the bottom um, for a few seconds, and then take it to your nose and, and have another sniff. Oh, nice and hoppy mm. and malty. <laughs> I'm just, I want to drink it now. <laughs> so we've got hoppy and malty, which is a really good start because the beer's brewed with uh, hops and malt. Um, does anybody have any other things they want to offer in terms of aroma? What can you smell? Do you like the smell? Does it smell of beer? It very good. much smells good. of beer. Anybody get any, <laughs> any sort of fruit come through at all? Citrus notes? Right, we're on a roll now. Anything else? OK, well, let's, let's move through um, and taste. When you taste, if you want to take a little bit of air in on your, your mouth, you can do. If not, then don't. Do give a bit of a swirl around your mouth. You know your taste buds are on your tongue, but again, as I said, because beer has bitterness, you'll pick up some of the flavour on your, almost on your back teeth as well. Um, and then when you swallow, you'll pick up some of that flavour going all the way down, and the flavour will develop over the few seconds that you have it in your mouth and after you've swallowed. So let's move on to that bit. That is so, it's like a big hug. It's so smooth and... It is, so in the absence of being able to do physical hugs at the moment, um, <laughs> if you want a hug, obviously have a glass of old hooky. Um, in terms of the flavor, a bit of sweetness there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody gone for another sip? You've got that Moorishness quality. 
And um, if you were going to drink this beer with, a, with some food, what food do you think might complement this beer? Yeah. Roast lamb, mm. sweet beer, sweet meat. That's my favorite, nice bit of uh, quite tender lamb, cooked quite pink. Um, sweet flavor of the meat comes through, goes really well with the beer. And when you do start having beer with food, you just unleash a whole new palette of uh, flavors and, and aromas. Does everybody like that beer? There's lots of happy faces, so I'm assuming. And there's, there's a lot of nodding from the back. Flavia, how are they doing at home? Do they like Old Hooky? They do, and it seems that they're actually fans of the brewery itself. They're quite up to date with other types of beer that they serve here. And uh, actually, Paul, who seems to be one of the top fans of the brewery, uh, says that the uh, old hooky goes really great with cheese, in his opinion. He hasn't said anything about this one yet, so we don't know what he likes to pair his red rye with, but he's happy to have the old hooky with cheese. Well, cheers to everyone at home. And if you haven't already got the old hooky in, I believe there might be some offers on the beer tonight, James, is that right? I think there are, yeah. Have a look at our website and in our shop this evening, and there's a big reduction off a case of this lovely beer. So there's five pounds off a case of Old Hooky, just for tonight. So when you're watching the Facebook Live, um, there should be links going in to the beers that we're tasting, and you'll be able to find those beers and buy them, but they are reduced, but only for tonight. So if you do like the idea of Hooky, or you've been tasting it and you like the taste of the Hooky, then get online while that offer is on. Now, I've had Old Hooky before, and I love the taste of it. And it, it's, it's a really fabulous thing for a winter's evening, a cold evening by the fire, or with roast lamb on a Sunday lunchtime. The other beers I haven't tried before, but actually just tasting this again, and I've tasted it before, going through the process of tasting is quite a different experience. You notice so much more about the beer, don't you? You do, yeah, and it's important to take on those qualities. It's also important to uh, enjoy the beer for what it is. Um, and I think, of course, the best thing that you uh, need to have, food and beer is lovely, uh, but more importantly, is friends and beer. And I hope that's what we've got here uh, this evening. Well, there's lots of people drinking beer with their friends tonight. We hope that you're drinking Old Hooky with your friends at home tonight. If this has suddenly become your favorite, let us know. If not, then drink on, friends, because we have two more beers to try tonight. What else have we got to try? OK, so the next beer that we're going on to is a beer called Red Rye. Um, about six years ago, we installed a small uh, trial brewery within the main brewery building um, where we could do a bit of uh, research and development and perhaps push the boundaries on some uh, flavours of beer. And uh, one of the... Um, Red rye, as the name says, uh, doesn't just have barley malt in it, it has some rye malt as well, as well as some wheat malt. Now, rye um, is probably a cereal that's more well known in whiskey production. And traditionally, rye was quite difficult to brew a beer with in a traditional brew house system, um, as we have here. But we tried it in the pilot plant because that gave us the opportunity to do some, uh, some R&D and push the boundaries without quite so much risk as doing a, a full-scale commercial brew. Um, so this beer has a similar colour to the old hooky. Uh, it has a three cereal base, uh, but it has a very different hop content. And I hope when you um, go through the tasting process, you'll see it's a very different style of beer. Now, you don't often see rye beer around in the UK. Is that because of the difficulty of brewing? Or is it because the taste of UK beer drinkers? Or is it a bit of both? I think it's a bit of both. Historically, it was the difficulty of, of brewing with it. Um, and then I think uh, it is just getting it through the palate. Rye has almost a slightly spicy undertone to the beer. Um, and balanced with a bit of wheat that gives a very full mouthfeel, it's a much stronger flavour. Um, you could say it's a more challenging beer to drink as well, but we need to push the boundaries. Right, it's time to be challenged. James, pour us some red rye. And everybody here, if you want to open your red rye, pour the red rye and taste along with us. Thank you very much. 
We know that uh, you're already on the Red Rye at home, some of you. I don't know if you had the old hooky as well, but the Red Rye is going down very well in some households. I'm trying very hard not to taste this until James tells me I can, but it's such a beautiful colour. Good, so has everybody managed to uh, find some red rye and uh, get the red rye to make its journey from the bottle to the glass or from the tap to the glass? Everybody got some red rye? Everybody have a red rye? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, that's good, seven, so about 20%. Anybody else got red rye? I think a number of people have got a rather nice beef burger, but some um, <laughs> red rye. So you look at the color, it's a bit darker than the old hooky, yeah. a bit more of a red hue there. It's a very rich um, colour. And say this is brewed with barley malt, wheat malt, and malted rye. So it has three different cereals in it. Whereas the old hooky that you tried at the beginning uh, was just barley malt. So again, look at the colour, have a sniff. And I think with this beer, um, before you've even swirled it in the glass, you get a very different aroma come through. So then do the swirl bit. The head's really different as well, isn't it? It has got a tighter head, and that, that's from yeah. the wheat mold. Wheat tends to give that very Quite nice creamy. tight bubble. And uh, so, so uh, just before I sip, um, any the aroma of the red rye different to the old hooky? I sipped already. But you're ahead of the game here. Red rye aroma. Well, I'm going citrusy. I'm getting a lot of fruit, citrus, yeah, um, really a bit of fruity. dark fruit as well, even um, just a little bit of mango creeping through. I'm and, actually uh, starting to think that I haven't had my five a day so far today, but this might do it. <laughs> and then let's, you've had a sip. Let's, I have. Let's have a sip I'm going to have another sip, though, because the other one was an illegal sip. So. And straight away, I think, when you drink that beer, Whereas the old hooky took a nice gentle path through yeah. your mouth, danced across the tongue and slid gently down the throat. This beer hits your tongue and then explodes into the top of your palate. All that fruitiness comes through. You feel in the top of your mouth, you're getting that almost a, a bit of a zing coming through from some of the fruit. Yeah. But then you, when you swallow, it doesn't have the bitterness that the old hooky had. It's, it's quite sweet. Not and there's almost a hint of, I think, a sort of cane sugar note comes through. And you get it again. But it not, like too not, not too cloying. sweet, not cloying. It's got a no. really clean, fresh taste to it. Um, I have to say, I've never had a rye beer before. I had absolutely no idea what to expect. And it's a revelation. And I really, really like it. There's a time for a favourite like an old hookie. This is just a completely different creature. Very different. So the first beer, I'd say, was very traditional. It's probably some of the flavours of what we've grown up with, what we expect from a traditional English beer, um, and hopefully it delivered. This is something completely different with that bigger malt base, that bigger hop base. There's one English hop and five American hops in here, so hops grown in a much hotter climate with a much more citrusy content. But not just citrus, like you said, we're getting a bit of dark fruit come through yeah. here as well. Quite sweet, but not so sweet that you wouldn't want to drink another one, I hope. No, no, not too sweet at all. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of sweet beers. Um, so that, that one is absolutely fine by me. And this beer's gone down very well. It's uh, won the World Beer Awards Best Rye Beer uh, several years. The one year it was beaten, I think, in 2016, it was beaten by Brewdog. So we can sort of live with that, and then we regain the Now you're back the on top So we're back again. there, yeah. So um, I don't know if you might notice at home, but when I finish tasting this beer, I'm not actually going to put it aside. I'm just going to put it there and come back to it uh, because I think I might have a new favourite. Um, Flavia, how are the folks doing at home? Is it Paul that had the red rye before? Does he, in fact, have any red rye left at well, all? Well, he does, and he calls it champion ale. Champion ale. And although he prefers it in cask, he said, it's fine if it's from keg as well, so he's happy just to have it. Um, Victoria's sad because she couldn't find red rye in time for the tasting, unfortunately, but she is taking notes now, so just for next time she does find the red rye, she will know what to be careful and to pay attention to. And we also have Richard saying that he remembers seeing Red Rye at a beer festival recently, so I think that's okay. great.
So uh, hockey often go out and about. So it, it turns out that Red Rye's been out to a beer festival recently, and Richard's been able to get it there. Fantastic. Um, for Victoria, Victoria, I am so sorry that you are not sitting there with this Red Rye right now. And I'm very happy that I am, but I am very sad for you. So. Um, Obviously, if you're within driving distance of the brewery, you can come and get some from the brewery. But I think if Victoria were to go online right now to the hooky shop, there might be a bit of a special offer there as well. There's a very special offer for the uh, Red Rye this evening, uh, because from April the 1st, um, and this is not a, an April Fool's joke, Red Rye will be available for three months on the hand pool. So in order to whet people's appetite up to that, you can buy a case of Red Rye this evening for just £12, a pound a bottle to really get you into the groove, ready for three months of Red Rye on the hand pool. So to celebrate Red Rye's award wins, it's down to £1 a bottle in the online shop. And um, very nice it is too. What do we think of the Red Rye, folks? Raise your glass if it's a... Uh, if it's a favourite, oh yes, they like the red rye. So I have to say, James, I'm, I'm kind of loath to put this one down, but I am aware we're supposed to be tasting three beers tonight. So I am, I'm going to put it very carefully there and no one's allowed to drink it, but we will move on. We will. So I think what we can do, we can park the red rye for a minute, uh, we can try the next beer, um, and then we can always come back and do the most important test on the red rye, which is the satiability test, or drinkability test. <laughs> and I'm not driving tonight, so that one's fine with me. Now, our third beer tonight is actually a lager. Yes, you heard me right. A lager from the Hook Norton Brewery. I'm going to ask James in a minute what on earth he was thinking of doing a lager. Do we know, has, has Hook Norton ever done a lager before? Has Hook Norton ever done a lager before that you know of? I've not bumped into one before. So we'll ask James, he's busy pouring me my Ironstone lager at the moment, which I'm looking forward to. Thank you very much. So, James. So it's a, it's a very interesting question, uh, have we ever brewed a lager before? And I, I'm hoping that we might get one or two more people interested in the conversation here. Um, because I get asked questions like, uh, have you ever brewed a sour beer? And I've spent the last 29 years desperately trying not to brew a sour beer. Um, <laughs> in terms of lager, we have never brewed a lager before. Um, and most people tend to associate lager with perhaps a, a very limited choice of beer. But in fact, the word lager means storage. It means a beer that's fermented and stored for a longer period of time than the two ales that we've just tried. Um, it's much lighter. So as soon as we look at the colour, has everybody found the lager? Have you all found the lager? Has everybody, everybody found the lager? Lager. <laughs> I think they might still be on the red rye. Yes, we've got some lager drinkers over there. <laughs> I think some of them are still on the red rye. <laughs> Has everybody found the lager? That's the light-coloured beer. Yeah? Good. It's not long now, folks. The bar will reopen shortly, but we just need to do this tasting of the lager. So we've all found the lager. Yeah, good. Excellent. Um, colour, clearly much paler than the other beers. Um, but don't be misled into thinking that lagers have to be pale, because a lot of uh, lagers, certainly on the continent, start off as being very dark beers. And you can get dark lagers, you can get black lagers, you can get pale lagers. As I said, oh, look, isn't that hush? Um, the word lager means storage. It takes longer to brew. It's fermented and brewed at a lower temperature, so the activity of the yeast fermenting the beer um, happens more slowly. And so we need to give it that storage time. So that's the, what the word lager really means. And say so we mustn't be misled by what we've perhaps been brought up with as, as lager. So this is very much a hand, handmade lager. Um, we're looking to try and get some Czech style influences, but unashamedly it's obviously brewed here. So it is a, an English lager. Um, I was asked earlier, what made you brew a lager? And um, can anybody help me with the answer to that? Because I'm not quite sure. Um, <laughs> 
But anyway, we have brewed a lager. Uh, it's called Ironstone Lager, named after the local stone that's quarried around here, but more importantly, named after the stone the brewery is actually built with. And on the bottle label, you'll see a lovely picture of that William Bradford designed brewery, say, built from, from ironstone. Uh, so it's a mid 4% uh, style of beer, completely different to the uh, two beers that you tried earlier, but you'll probably know that because you all know your beers. So we've done the colour, it's nice and pale. Have a little bit of a sniff. It's pale, but it's kind of got warm tones to it, rather than that green-yellow lager you sometimes get. It's got the warmer tones coming through, hasn't it? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, it's nice, sort of that um, pale, but a bit of richness to it. Um, and then you have a sniff, then you'll need do to do I the swirl? swirl on this one. I'm getting the hang of this. I'm doing the swirl. And then let's, let's go straight into the taste. So it's a bit fizzier than the other beers. It's carbonated a bit more, which lager generally needs to be. You've got lovely small bubbles in there, so it's quite smooth across the palate as you drink it. You're not getting that burst of fruitiness that you perhaps got certainly from the red rye beer. It's a much more delicate style of beer. And it's actually quite difficult to taste and enjoy this beer after you've drunk such a, a full-flavoured beer beforehand. Um, so you probably need to have another healthy sip to just clear the palate. And then I just did. what can you taste with that beer? Anybody going to offer any comments? Anything? <laughs> I can't possibly comment on that, but um, all I can do is nod. Um, thank you. Anybody else? Do you like it? Could you drink another one? Yeah. For a lager, it, it has got a smoothness that I wasn't expecting. It's really refreshing, as I think a lager should be. It is really refreshing. But it hasn't got that maybe acidic nature to it that you might find with a lager. It's a very, um, a very kind of refined lager. It's got a very elegant taste to it. We wanted something that was uh, clean and crisp. Um, the first two beers that you tried were brewed with our, our house yeast, our yeast we've been using for the last 150 plus years. Um, but this beer is brewed with a specific lager yeast. Um, to give it that different flavour, so it takes longer to ferment, um, but a very different flavour experience to the other beers. Cheers. Well, that's going down very nicely with me. Flavia, has anyone at home managed to lay their hands on some ironstone lager, or are they still on the red rye? Well, Jamie sure appreciates the lager. Jamie says, lager he says ironstone is awesome. So we finally have a, fa a fan of lager, not just red rye. <laughs> um, also, Paul says that he prefers this to any of the commercial giant lagers, definitely. And David is sadly snowbound in Deep River, Canada. He wishes he were here with us, but unfortunately. Also, Kate Sturgis is saying hello from Devon. She's an ex-local. And that's about it for now. Alan also says that we're here. I just don't know if they're here, here, or here on the internet. So how about a wave, Alan, if you're here? <laughs> so Alan says he's here, but we don't know if that means here as in Hook Norton or here as in right in the brewery. So if Alan's here, give me a wave. I think we, uh, might be here. We hope the Snowden people in Canada manage to get some supplies of beer soon. And, uh, and Jamie says that Ironstone Lager is awesome. So you heard it first yeah. here. Thank, Thank you, Jamie. you very much, Jamie. I'm really rather enjoying it as well. Um, how about here? Anyone in here think that the Ironstone is awesome? Oh, yes. We have some glasses raised to that. So we've tasted our three beers. You couldn't really have picked much different ones, could you? They really were three very distinctive beers. And tonight we've had a kind of a firm favorite, haven't we, with the old hickey. We've had the red rye, which I had certainly never tasted before, never even had a rye beer before, and might be new to a lot of you. That was a revelation. For me, it really was. 
and the Ironstone Lager. I love a lager. And this is a particularly nice one. Um, three completely different beers. But for Hop Norton, you do have quite a range, don't you? We do. We try and have um, a broad range of beers to suit every palate. We've got uh, the Hookie, that's the, the younger brother of the old Hookie. We've got Hookie Gold, the golden beer. Uh, we've got some Off the Hook, um, which is new out. So if you haven't tried, if you're here tonight and you've not tried Off the Hook, now is your chance to try it. Um, we've got some XA, or a collaboration with the Yeasty Boys, and also some of our Double Stout. The, Double Stout was, uh, we stopped brewing it in 1917, resurrected it in 1996. It's a genuine, over 100 year old recipe of a traditional cask stout. So a great choice for our guests this evening. And for our viewers who seem to like hanging out at beer festivals, I can't imagine why you love hanging out at beer festivals, but we've had some good feedback about that. Might you find something like Off the Hook featured at a beer festival? You will, yes. And um, the other thing to mention is uh, we every two weeks we do a tour around some local pubs. So keep it on Facebook, keep it on the brewery page. We go around in an old Series 3 Land Rover, and when we pull up outside the pub, for 30 minutes, the clock starts ticking, but the hooky is on us for that 30 minutes. The next trip, I think, is the 25th of uh, March. We'll be out and about locally, so keep an eye out. And if you want to find a hooky on us, look for the Land Rover, look for me, and I'll buy you a beer. So have a look on the Hook Norton Facebook page, and then you'll find out when the next hooky on tour is, and the one after that. They do give, you do give some um, cryptic clues to help people we find do. you, don't you? So it's not just random, it's not just like you're going to be in a random pub and the, uh, the Land Rover turns up. There are some cryptic clues given beforehand to help you suss out where your free pint may be waiting for you that night. But Hooky on Tour is a lovely idea. Hooky on Tour will be out and say next time we go out we'll be going to a, a pub named after a famous trade. We'll be picking up two or three pubs with an animal in the title and then we'll be picking up one pub with a very unusual name. So that's your first clue. I'm hoping there's going to be more clues to come because a pub with an animal in the name, I'm, I'm still searching on that one. So watch out for Hooky on Tour. Um, you like giving away free beer, actually, don't you? I like engaging with consumers <laughs> and customers and drinking beer with them. Because it is actually a free pint you get if you catch Hooky on tour. And remember, there's the next open tap tasting here on the 8th of April. So that's here in the Hook Norton Brewery. I believe there's a gentleman going to come down and try that. He nearly ran off with the red rye, but just managed to save it. Um, and don't forget your special offer code before it expires. So there's five pounds off a case of old hooky. The red rye is now just at one pound a bottle to celebrate those award wins. And there's also five pounds off a case of the Ironstone Lager, but that's only for tonight. So uh, I think we will paste the link to the uh, Hook Norton online shop in the chat box so that you can get to that very easily. If you want to pick up your special offer beer in person, you can, can't you, You can James? do so this evening, yeah. You can pick that up, and uh, also you might want to come down and experience this brewery in person, because if you've never been to Hook Norton, I cannot tell you what a very beautiful tower brewery it is. Um, and it's stunning, isn't it? We're extremely lucky to have such a lovely building. Um, you know, we're, as the generations go, we're custodians of the brewery for the next generation, but we're very lucky and we love to show what a wonderful site we've got here, have a look around, see the architecture, learn about the history, and then obviously come and do a sampling of a number of our beers just as we've done this evening. And you can do the tour, it takes you pretty much up to the top of the Tower Brewery and you can work your way down, see what happens where, even meet the Shire horses who really do still deliver the beer, which is another lovely thing. They have uh, beer delivered by Shire horses here in the cart. And um, one of the main things I love about being here, which again I can't send to you on Facebook Live and I wish I could bottle it and send it down the internet, but it's the smell of the brewery, which is an absolutely beautiful experience. Um, so it's well worth coming down either for an open tap or for a brewery tour or on any day of the week 
the cafe's open and you can just help yourself to a nice lunch and go in the shop. You're open most days of the year, aren't you? Kind of every day except like Christmas Day. The only Easter, days we're closed, kind of so Christmas Day, Boxing Day, uh, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, otherwise we're open. If you're coming on a tour and want to really take in those aromas and those lovely smells, then come on a weekday morning, book a tour for about 11 o'clock, and when you get here, you'll smell the lovely aromas of the work boiling, the hot notes coming out, and uh, you can almost guess which beer is being brewed that day. But we'd love to see you here at the brewery and show you what, uh, what a special place it really is. So thank you very much for joining us. Flavia, are there any last words from, from home? Just people recommending the tour, highly recommending it. Apparently someone has done it seven times. <laughs> they just can't get enough of Hook Norton Beer Brewery. And yes, that's about it. They're happy. Some of them are going to the Fantastic. store to find red rye. And everybody will be booking the tour for sure. <laughs> that's got to be a heck of a tour for someone to come on it seven times. Now that's a real Yeah, that's a real brewery committed fan. fan. Absolutely. Um, so thank you very much to everyone at home for joining us. Thank you, Flavia, for interacting with everyone at home. Thank you to uh, Mr. Hook Norton himself, Managing Director James Clark, for joining us and guiding us through that tasting. I might possibly go back and taste the red rind some more because I'm not quite sure I've finished tasting that one yet. That's what we like. And thank you to all of you for joining us for the tasting tonight. Cheers to you all. See you again soon, either on Facebook Live or in person. Thank you very much, and cheers from us here at Hook Norton. <laughs>